very excited about you know uh, Biocon Academy. We would love to actually hire each and every one of you. We would love to. Is that the reason you know you're in Academy? You wanted to, you know, get somewhere you know about than what you already are. You wanted to learn something new. You want to get exposure from the industry. You know uh, what they are doing. Because you might have heard, of, you know, across colleges, whatever you learn in colleges is not going to be, you know, useful in the industry, right? So you want something that you don't have, you know, already, right? But I see some of you are all some of you are experienced as well, right? How many of you have some industry experience? Any industry experience or academic experience? I heard from somebody that there is here, you know, somebody from here from Velour CMC or something like that. Okay, so some academic experience, right? Because the reason I asked is you have some exposure, right? Uh, it's very important to, you know, grasp on that exposure that you already have and build on top of it. But sometimes, uh, you know, the last 20 years I was in the U.S. So once uh, I came here, some of the things that, uh, you know, Bindu mentioned, you know, very important, 75% soft skills. You know, she mentioned that, right? So that is something that everybody has to develop in. And in fact, as you grow up your you know, career, it will become 90% soft skills. And as a CEO, you might not even need any technical skills, right? <laughs> you, can, you need only soft skills, because you, you have the people who have the technical expertise. So, uh, you know, Christiana Hamaker, she is the new head of Biocon Biologics, and uh, she's our CEO. And she's very energetic and very motivating. And then we have a goal as well for Biocon Biologics, where to be, you know, in the next couple of years. So as part of it, microbiology becomes part of it. Because if we don't have our uh, you know, facilities under control, right, as part of microbiology, contamination control, we will not have the right to operate, right? So microbiology is, that's why it's a very, very key component of that you know, success we want to achieve. Without microbiology, there is no drug product you know, that we can you know, provide to the patients. So uh, technical stuff. I don't want to cover. I think you have SMEs coming and covering. So uh, I, I was thinking what to, what to tell you, you know, what to tell you as a uh, you know, leader from Biocon, uh, you know, what to tell you. So we have a within quality control, uh, uh, what I have uh, at least practiced is uh, share what I read, okay, on a regular basis. So it's very important to be, I don't say you want to be a bookworm, but it's very important to read uh, books other than microbiology or biosciences, whatever technical field you're in. Uh, Self-improvement books, for example, or something that you're really passionate about. It's very important to read those. Uh, so one, uh, one such uh, leader I was reading about, her name is Indra Nui. How many of you know about Indra Nui? She is head of PepsiCo, she was head of PepsiCo, and uh, she retired from PepsiCo. Uh, she's an Indian American. Uh, then she's now, I, I, I believe she's part of the board of directors for Amazon. And Christiana always says that Biocon Biologics will be the next Amazon, you know, of biotechnology. So I thought it's very, you know, important to learn from each leader that you, you know, walk across, you meet. Uh, there's actually a, a, a plan that, uh, you know, I'm laying out for the team as well, how to, you know, approach that. But just I want to share a few things, okay, from what I learned from Indra Nui, okay? Uh, Indra Nui, by uh, background, she's an Indian American business executive, uh, and she is best known for having served as CEO of PepsiCo for 12 years. She has consistent, consistently ranked among the world's 100 most powerful women. Okay, and in fact, in Biocon Academy, we see more women than men. I don't know why, but that's, <laughs> that's what you know we typically do here. I guess m women want to continue learning, right? You know, that's uh, that's one thing I see, and uh, she was. Uh, she, she was the second most powerful woman on the Fortune list in 2015. So she's a you know true leader. Uh, if you don't know about Indra Nui, go and read about her. Any any time you read about a uh, well-known leader, you learn something. And if you have not learned something in a day, that means you're wasted the day. You have to learn something every day, right? As a student. So one of uh, she I noted down eight points you know from you know what she talked about and then what she you know uh, she has written about. First thing she talks about is work with purpose. So evaluate what you're doing to make the world a better place and work with passion, find your passion in whatever you do and don't do just a job. right It's about uh, how many of you worked in the microbiology industry in India? 
any of you, or at least heard about how the microbiology industry works? Uh, there, there could be several, uh, because microbiology is somewhere it's very manual, right? So uh, there's a saying in, in the US in Vegas, if it, whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So similarly in the microbiology lab, whatever happens in the lab happens in the lab. So that means, but we have to be true to ourselves, right? So but if you're passionate about the patient that you're supplying the product to, there will be no way you're going to think other way that this is the true result I got, I'm going to report this true result. No matter what the cause uh, of your job would be. Because you should not be thinking that, you know, if I report a bad result, I lose the job. Right? So that is something like you have to be passionate about, to be true to yourself and be honest and report what you got. Right? That is uh, being passionate and also the purpose of producing a good product for the patient. Because as a microbiologist in the industry, that's what you know, we are trying to do, right? We are trying to make sure quality is good for the product, right? And the, and the facility is good. And the second one is bolder we can be the better. It is, again, attached to the first one, right? Because if you find something that is wrong, you put your foot down and say this is wrong. Or at least go to somebody who you can approach and say, you know, at least calibrate your ideas. Maybe it's not wrong. Maybe you don't know the other side of the story. But at least you have to be bold and you have to, uh, you know, at least approach and don't stop it at your level, or whoever level that is, right? And then encourage, encourage an environment where it is creative, like a startup environment, right? Just not, not, not because you have a team uh, to manage, but even your peers, even your peers. So a peer can come to you and ask you all the time, oh, you know, help me with this, help me with this, help me with this, right? But then you will not be able to do your job. So then what you do? You encourage them to learn as well, right? Maybe you can start coaching a little bit if you know, but at least you know, uh, turn them into the right direction of you know, books or some you know, YouTube videos where they can learn. Have that mentality of abundance. Just because you teach somebody else or your peer doesn't mean that they'll be you know, you know, above you. Right? You have to have that mentality of abundance. And that's a very, very important uh, you know, rule that I follow at work. Just because my peer is asking me something and if I don't divulge the information, that, you know, in fact, I become bad. So I would rather you know, not feel any territory, but just give every information that I have. Okay? And then, uh, if you feel strongly about a change that is necessary, force it upon. That's what I was trying to tell you earlier. And if you have to throw a temper tantrum as well. Okay, that's what she said. Okay? Means, be forceful in that change if you really feel that it's wrong. Okay? And then connect with others, build and have a network. This is very, very important. By end of two uh, months, I guess, you should be knowing each and everybody. I'm sure they have all the soft skills programs and everything to make sure you know each and everybody. But when you go out, you know, like she mentioned, you're going to several new places. Connect with people, you know, build a network, and it'll go a long, long way. And I, could tell, you know, I can go on and on about hours of how, how even I got jobs, you know, uh, the multiple jobs in between. Everything is through connections. Everything, any any network that you build is worth, uh, you know, a long way. And then think long term and establish systemic solutions by collecting data. Right? Again, it's about uh, not just thinking short term. Have an end in mind. If you have read the book called uh, Seven Habits of uh, uh, by Stephen Covey, mm -hmm. he always the first thing he talks about is have an end in mind. So have that long term vision where you want to be, you know, where you're seeing yourself. And then you can you know, cut down the goals into a short term, maybe uh, yearly goals, monthly goals, weekly goals, daily goals, and that's how you actually achieve that long-term goal. And, uh, and then paint the picture in front of you, what the future could be. So if you have a goal, so right now your goal is to you know, successfully get out of this academy program and get a job, right? Or whatever your goal is, right? Or you want to start your own business, I don't know. So put the goal in front of you. Write down the goals that you have. And then you cut down the goals. You know, if I want to achieve this, what do I do? How do I prepare? And then be committed to it. That's very, very important. Those are all these, uh, uh, it's, it's not a soft skill, but it's a discipline that you develop that will uh, show in your soft skill, right, that you, when you work with somebody. These are all some inherent virtue that you develop, okay? And then uh, anything that's important to you needs personal attention. If you feel, if you have children, if you have to go on a particular day, and you're at work, you know, until 6 p.m., if you don't 
uh, take care of your family, uh, you cannot take care of work. Family comes first over work. That is something uh, that I don't see it in India, but I stress upon that family comes first over you know, work. Because if family is not there, your work will never be there. Okay, wherever, if you're a single also, because parents comes first, right? So, uh, so anything that's important to you needs personal attention, and give that attention and follow up by reorganizing if necessary. So maybe you can you know, work, come back and work late. You know, think about the solutions that you can come up with. Think, be creative, work with your manager wherever you go, and then you can, you can build those solutions. I used to have a manager, she would always come sharp at 8.30, leave at 4.30. But then she'll be connected on the laptop after 10.30, after her kids sleep. So it's, it's about you know, how you organize yourself, okay? And then don't quit being a student. She said this, okay? <laughs> and uh, don't quit being, she's already been a CEO for like 12 years, hey Wilson. So uh, uh, you just have to you know, uh, continuously learn on a daily basis. And then uh, connect with your customers. So you know, in this case, your customers, you know, it could be even your, uh, you know, teachers. You know, you know, it could be, you know, somebody you're, you know, where you're going to get your job, right? So whoever is your customer, connect with your customer, and uh, that may this maybe directly doesn't apply to you, but don't quit being a student and follow your dream and be willing to make sacrifices. And that's what they talked about, right? You have to work on Saturday, Sunday. You know, Megali talked about it, right? So you might have to make some sacrifices. You might have to find some babysitting arrangements for your kids on those days. You might have to quit some dance classes or a music class that you're regularly going. Something that you have to, to accomplish your dream. You have to do that. If you, there's no sacrifices, there is no pain, there's no gain, right? And then the last one, it's about care. Recognize that emotional quotient is as important as intellectual quotient. So your emotional quotient, so if you are not mentally stable, for example, if you have challenges, you have to take refuge wherever you can in the spiritual life, or not the spirit, but spiritual life, or you know, wherever you, know, you respect somebody and then you can get that emotional quotient up. And you have to be sane. Uh, you, know, you, you know, Wilson probably is going to come and talk to you. He can talk about the pressure that he has got you know, in the QC microbiology world. But if he's not sane, he'll not be able to handle the pressure. Okay, so emotional quotient is very important. Uh, that's about it. I didn't have anything else to chat. Uh, good luck with your uh, two uh, months of program and look forward to, you know, have, we, have, we have several Biocon Academy students who have joined, uh, you know, QC Microbiology uh, within Biocon. So we look forward to having you as well. Uh, but there's a lot of competition to get you. So thank you.